Yes? Begging your pardon, ma'am. This is a note for Mr. Holmes from Inspector Lestrade of Scotland Yard. Oh, very well. I'll see that he gets it. Thank you, Constable. Have you been sufficiently fortified by Mrs. Hudson's murderous coffee, Watson, to put your mind to this mystery? Whatever you want at that home so early in the morning. I'm sorry to interrupt your reading, man. Mrs. Hudson just delivered a very intriguing note. Would you care to peruse it? By all means. Mr. Holmes. A young woman has been brutally murdered outside the Regency Theatre in Oxford Street. The evidence here suggests that Jack the Ripper has emerged from under his rock in Whitechapel and struck savagely in Mayfair. <laughs> Despite your contention that the Ripper's work is without motive and therefore not suited for your methods, I believe you would find this case of interest and the Yard would be most grateful to hear your opinion. G. Lestrade. I will not deny his request, Watson. If you will accompany me, I shall be glad to have you at my side. With pleasure, Holmes. Lestrade seems finally to recognize the value of your investigative techniques. My blushes, Watson. Your compliment will turn my head. Let us see if I am truly worthy of it.
Hello and welcome! Now, you may have noticed during the opening credits, especially if you play, have played this game before, that there was a long list of cast names. Now, this is the 3DO version. And there is no difference in gameplay compared to the PC version. But the big difference between the 3DO version and the PC version is this. Have you decided to wear your bowler hat for this investigation, Watson? No, it's always Holmes. I feel positively undressed without it. The PC version was only voiced during the opening cinematic and the ending cinematic, and I believe somewhere in the middle. The 3DO version is not only fully voiced, it also has those video clips to accompany it, so it's a little bit different in some ways. Anyway, let's continue on with the game. Have you already begun your journal entries, Doctor? No, of course, Holmes. Any case in which you take an interest will certainly interest the world. Okay. Well, there is much to explore in the room, but the only things that are voiced are the characters. So I'm not going to look at anything that is, that is not important. Let's continue on with the case. Come along, Watson. The game's afoot. Quite so, Holmes. I'm sure that we're going to learn a lot about Holmes and Watson throughout this Let's Play series, but I will go through certain characters here and there when I can. Are the rest of your lads available, Wiggins? They's at the ready, sir. Tell me what you need and I'll pass it on. The Zaydu is willing to work, so... It'll cost eight bob a day, plus the usual reward. Now Wiggins is, I would say, a de facto leader of the Baker Street Irregulars, who were a group of street boys employed by Holmes. And a bob is a shilling, which was, I believe in the books, his usual payment. And their job was usually to be some kind of intelligence agents as he believed that no one really noticed street boys, but they would notice an adult man following them around. My compliments, Mr. Rigby. The day finds you well, I trust. Oh, indeed, Mr. Holmes. Business has been brisk. The great British public devours anything to do with the Ripper. While Jack's at work, my family is eating steak and kidney pud. I do have some contentions with the facts that they're using Jack the Ripper for this case, but maybe that's something for another time. Mr. Holmes, Dr. Watson. Very good of you to come so quickly. After you've thoroughly examined the scene and the corpus delecti, please share your observations with me. Now Lestrade is a member of Scotland Yard and he does have a lot of respect for Holmes. And Holmes does have some respect for Lestrade. Basically, he's what Holmes calls the best of a bad bunch, which is quite high praise in Holmes' book. What can you tell me that isn't obvious from the scene, Inspector? The deceased was an actress here at the theatre, name of Sarah Carraway. She lived by herself out in Bayswater. According to her only witness, there was a sister, whereabouts presently unknown. The witness found the body, but remembers nothing of the person she saw fleeing the scene. You may speak to her if you like, though she's incoherent. She's in the victim's dressing room, through that door and up the stairs. But before you go to her, I'd like you to confirm some theories of my own. 
After you've thoroughly examined the body, of course, I think you'll find that the number and the character of the wounds tell the whole story. Yes, we will do just that. I mean, the work kind of does look a bit like Jack the Ripper's kind of style, I'd say. But the big problem I have was that the five victims that were actually known... I mean, you can feel free to pause these descriptions. But the one big problem I have is that the five victims known with Jack the Ripper were mainly... They weren't affluent people, shall we say. I think that's the, probably the most polite way I could put it. I mean, lost them were beggars and prostitutes. And this lady here, she's come out of the side of this building. And I believe she's an actress as well, so it's not the usual victim that Jack went for. Anyway, we got some evidence we can pick up. We will, we will look at these a little bit more closely soon. I don't think the barrels have anything to give us. The one problem with the 3DO version is there is no mouse cursor. Well, there's a cursor on the screen obviously, but everything's done with I'm using keyboards. Please examine anything you like, but I shall need that hat bag and its contents as evidence. Okay, well we can't examine it much more further than what we have. Let's examine this hat first. Yeah, I don't think a beggar or a prostitute in the 19th century would really be able to afford silk. Please look at anything you like, but I shall need that hat as evidence. And the Stroud actually appears in quite a number of the Sherlock Holmes stories. There's definitely a respect between them both. The ragged edges of these shallow wounds suggest a knife shaped like a surgeon's scalpel, but with a serrated blade. Are you familiar with such an instrument, Watson? I've never seen a tool like that in a surgery or anywhere else. I can't imagine a medical use for such a knife. Yeah, Dr. Watson was, I believe, an assistant surgeon in the army, so I guess he knows what he's talking about with medical equipment. But a serrated blade does not sound exactly like a tool for precision. Is it your professional opinion that these wounds match those described in the official reports of the Whitechapel murders? I'm sure you are much more intimate with the gory details of those cases than I, Holmes. Uh, you seem to have the stomach for it. Uh, the only thing that is clear to me is that this unfortunate woman is the victim of something more ghoul than human. Don't be so certain, my friend. The mysterious and the monstrous are rarely the same thing. Do you see anything of significance, Watson? I'm not sure, Holmes. Uh, what I see disgusts me so that I can barely think. I believe I have seen no clues that reveal the truth of this horrible matter to me. If I have seen any, I have not been able to understand them. I'm sorry. 
I'll switch to Lestrade momentarily. Is everything here exactly as you found it? Nothing's been moved since I arrived, Mr. Holmes. I rang up the inspector, and he was most particular in his instructions. Touched nothing, he says. So I've been standing here like a lump. Do you have any information that would assist our investigation, Constable? No, Mr. Holmes. I'm sorry. But with fending off the newspaper gents and half the nosy buggers in London, I've been preoccupied, as you might say. Okay, before I speak to Lestrade, let's have a quick look at what we've picked up so far. Okay, I guess this is what we've already seen in the, in the intro. Okay, I'm guessing Jack the Ripper would not have written a message saying to, to meet someone somewhere. Although I could be wrong. I think we have done all we can do here. Wait a minute, we can't open the constable. Oh, wait a second. There we go, I thought I was missing something. Okay, I'll just do it being doubly careful. Have you decided on an explanation for the crime, Inspector? There is no doubt that this is the Ripper's awful work. The fact that we are miles away from his habitual haunts in Whitechapel is of absolutely no significance. This gruesome business has his signature written all over it. As much as I want to give the most Holmes kind of response, this is an adventure game, so it's worth exploring all avenues of conversation. I am reluctant to speculate about such a serious crime before all the facts are in my possession. Ah, Mr. Holmes, as usual, it's difficult to pin you down, but I see that you've divined no more from the scene than I. If you do come to any conclusions, I'd be happy to consider them. I'm afraid I cannot give myself the pleasure of agreeing with you, Inspector. And being a man of scientific temperament, I doubt whether Dr. Watson would concur with your theory. Now, without hearing the results of the medical examiner's investigation, I would not even presume to have a theory. Quite right, Doctor. Mr. Holmes and I perhaps overstep ourselves, though I am certain that the official inquest will prove me correct. You seem very sure of your facts, Lestrade, but I believe that there is evidence that contradicts your interpretation. I assure you that I have examined everything in great detail, Mr. Holmes. I seriously doubt that I have missed a significant clue. What have you seen that goes against my theory? Too sure why a perfume bottle in a, in a purse missing would be a big clue. I mean, should there be one there? I suspect that you noticed that the victim's jewellery is missing. What do you make of that? I presume you are referring to the abrasions on her neck and hand. As you well know, the Ripper takes selected items of jewellery from his victims. This further supports my case, Holmes. 
I believe that if my theory were flawed, you would be the man to set me straight. But it looks like you have nothing material to add. The killer's choice of weapon is most telling, don't you think? Indeed. My professional eye tells me that this woman was killed with a surgeon's scalpel, and we know the Ripper uses a scalpel with the skill of a medical man. Isn't that so, Dr. Watson? No, I think not, Inspector. Holmes' examination of the wounds revealed that the fatal blade was serrated, and I know of no medical man who uses such an instrument. Hmm, that is unusual, but I suspect it is unimportant. I never said the Ripper was a doctor. Perhaps his other scalpel lost its razor edge. He's done enough work with it, heaven knows. Let's not confuse the investigation with trivialities, gentlemen. And perhaps the murderer was imitating the style of Jack the Ripper. Lurid and detailed accounts of the fiend's disgusting exploits have been in all the newspapers. Perhaps pigs will one day fly, Doctor. I need facts. Mr. Holmes, my hypothesis is that the Ripper is responsible for this murder. I will restrict my enquiries to the question of this serrated murder weapon. You are welcome to look further into the entire matter if you wish. You may speak to the witness in the victim's dressing room and you may want to examine the victim's flat at number 21 Creed Street. We will do at some point, I'm sure. But yes, this definitely seems more like a copycat case. Is there anything more you can tell me, Inspector? I have said all I have to say. I can only hope that my inquiries into the source of the murder weapon will reveal some new link that will lead me to this foul criminal and help me send him to the gallows. I hope you've seen something that I've overlooked, though I suspect the chance is remote. It appears I have little choice save to report to the Yard that Jack the Ripper is no longer satisfied with hunting in Whitechapel. A citywide alert must be posted. Okay, I think we've done all that we can do here.